You're now listening to Emily Shields Talk with Substance on Hotline. Radio Jamaica, active for the good of our nation. Thank you, listeners. We're back with you on the hotline. We've got 10 minutes with Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark. Minister, pleasure as always having you on the hotline. Pleasure to be here, Emily. Right. Thank you. Is this, is this okay? Yes, sounding. The levels are quite good, okay. so thank you so much. Okay. So there was quite a bit of contentious debate in the Parliament on Tuesday with the debate around this um, this order that you tabled last week as regards the um, coming under the Public Procurement Act in relation to the Montego Bay Perimeter Road project. What good reason could there be, Minister, for a project um, totaling about 30 point something billion dollars that will be funded by us through money that you have put um, set aside from the budget for you not to be going through the process of tendering for the contractor to build this project. Uh, thank you for that question, Emily. It's a very legitimate question. But just to, a little clarity for your listeners, uh, it's not that we are that the, the funds for the Montego Bay Bypass will all be expended in this fiscal year. Uh, this fiscal year, we've only programmed 1.6 billion or 1. Point, sorry, 1.8 billion for land acquisition and other uh, preliminary works. Uh, the project will be, imp- will be implemented over uh, at least a four-year period, which includes this year. Now, the, the, I just want to just put a few sort of facts out there, uh, Emily. The first fact is that the Montego Bay Bypass project has been spoken about for two decades. The second fact is that the government uh, started on this project in earnest, uh, in as early as 2017, 2018. The third fact is that when the government started or embarked upon this uh, project, the, uh, the, there was every intention to use the same modality that has been used for other highway projects, that is applying to the China Exim Bank for a loan, and in that government-to-government uh, setup, the contractor would be China Harbor Engineering, and it would be a government-to-government relationship, which would be outside of the Procurement Act anyway. Halfway through, or not even halfway through, you know, maybe a year ago or slightly over, uh, we made the determination. Sorry, let me back up a bit. Fourth fact is that given that that was the modality chosen, uh, China Harbor Engineering Company would have gone ahead at its own cost and prepare the feasibility studies that allowed for a loan application to be made to the China Exim Bank, i.e. to apply to the China Exim Bank for the money to borrow to do this project, you have to satisfy any banker, including them, that the project is viable and feasible. Mm -hmm. China Harbor would have gone out and on its own done all the feasibility, uh, which would have made, you know, shown that the project is viable so we could apply to the China Exim Bank. Proverbially halfway through, uh, the Ministry of Finance advised its counterpart uh, in the Ministry of Economic Growth that, look, we don't need to borrow to get this project through. And in fact, we shouldn't borrow. Borrowing is going to be inconsistent with where we want to go. And for other sort of reasons, borrowing is not something that we need to do or should do. But let me let's step back a bit. The government, however... Just, just a second. For, their, for the feasibility study that Czech had to do, did they need to get loan from China Exim Bank to be able to do that? Do you know? No, no. They undertook that, that expenditure on their own. Okay. All right. Go. Okay. And again, because this this was the just you know this is the modality of the government of Jamaica under a successive administration has been using uh, yeah. a government government relationship between the government of Jamaica and the government of China, where the, the China Exim Bank provides the funding, and a Chinese contractor does the building. And in that way, the China Exim Bank was functioning no differently than any other Exim Bank in the world. Exim yes. Bank this to promote the export of their country's goods and services. That's right. So the they're Belgians looking, they're, they're looking out for their money. Chinese interests. So China Hub becomes the contracting entity to get the job. Correct. That is how those are structured. Mm-hmm. Now, halfway through... 
uh, Jamaica says, look, we don't need to borrow. And it's the Ministry of Finance doing its own technical analysis. We don't need to borrow for this. Um, we can finance it on our own. But the government is down the wicket under the proper modality, which uh, I have just explained to mm-hmm. you, where it, you know, it's going to be government to government, financed by China, and the contract is to be China Harbor, and they had, we had gone ahead, done feasibility, done design with them, etc. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, at that point, I just want to put the choices that we face, and then we can discuss those choices. So, you know, what has been happening, I wasn't in Parliament yesterday, but all kind of smoke and mirror, taking it outside of its context. Right? I'm you know, our conversation, let's put it right back in its context, and let's talk about the choices that we face. The first choice is would have been to go ahead as previously planned to borrow the money from China and to implement the project as we're doing with the South Coast Highway and as we have done with previous projects. That's the first choice. The second choice would be to pull up the stump and to start over again, do over the feasibility, do over the design, and then go into a tender process. And the third choice, which is the one we have chosen, would be uh, that this becomes a national development project which is recognized by the Public Procurement Act and therefore allows us to contract directly with China Harbor, who had done the feasibility and the design work. So que- que- all right, so quest- out- quest- quest- question before you go on. Under the yes. previous arrangement where you were intending to get the loan from China, Exim Bank, and Czech would be the contractor, who owns the design when Czech does the feasibility study? Yeah, so that that would be uh, it would it would it would be owned by the people who paid for it, and in that case, check paid for it, so it belongs to them. So, could there be a fourth alternative where you would say, since we're no longer going with a loan from China, Exim Bank, could we pay you for your design, and we're going to fund it on our own? So we're going to have to go by competitive bidding. How much would your design cost? Is that something that was considered? Yes, it was considered. Not not seriously for reasons that I'll mention. But let's put it as a, as a force for mm-hmm. the purpose of this conversation. And let's just go through the pros and cons. And cause I, you know, I fully believe in accounting to the Jamaican people how we arrive at decisions. And you know, not in the smoke and mirror way trying to... You know, this is the same opposition... Uh, of which Omar Davies was a part in 2012, who you will know, uh, came to the Jamaican people and wanted to put, you know, to go directly with China Harbor with three con- with the North South Highway, with the Gordon Key Project, and with the Fort Augusta Project. He went and he set up an independent panel that he wanted to oversee these projects. He flew in the face of the contractor general, who he took to court. This is a form of PNP administration. And you and the opposition vociferously so opposed wait, it. Let me, let, no, 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 let me, let me, let me finish. I want to, right? Yes. Took the contractor general to court. So the urgency of this, they totally recognize, meaning these kinds of situations. And what did they do? In 2015, they amended, or the new public procurement act, which came into being in 2015, allowed for projects declared as a national development project for you to go directly. So this is very legitimate and comes out of our experience, and an experience that the opposition knows very well. But let's just go through the four options. Uh, so what you saw yesterday and, and before, a lot of smoke and mirror and obfuscation. Let's just deal with the choices. If, you, if, if this conversation yesterday was a practical conversation about the choices that we mentioned, it would be more productive. Okay? So let's look at the four choices and let us examine uh, you know, the pros and cons. The choice of going as we had previously planned with having the financing tied to the construction has a significant disadvantage in borrowing uh, from China, which is going to put us off on our uh, fiscal trajectory. Right? And that's not something that we can uh, entertain at all. Mm-hmm. In addition, you know, you know, borrowing from, you know, you know, China has experienced, you know, losses, lending to the developing world, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, the, some, of the, some of what they may want 
you know, even though the rates are low and the repayment is long, you know, we, you know, if we don't have to do it, we don't want to do it, mm-hmm. right? That, that, I'm not going to say any more on that, right? Oh, so, all right. A, absolutely no, no. Minister. We don't need to do it. M- Minister, yeah. I regret. Yes. I, I called you later than I, I'd intended to, and I want to hear the pros and cons. Can we come back tomorrow because I'm absolutely out of time? I want well, to finish. I mean, yes. Just leave it high and dry. And I know. I, I feel so badly. Yes, I know. But, okay, let me... Reverse. No, I, I have to go... At, at this, at Ten this. seconds, yes. Okay, okay. Ten seconds, Minister. Go no, ahead. That, Emily, decision come from, you know, out of a set of choices. And what we have to do is to examine the real choices that we have. Yes. Made. So tomorrow, in the real choice, they say, you'll understand that this is the best decision. Tomorrow, available choices. we will go through the choices back. tomorrow. Can we? I beg you, please. Dr. Nigel Clark, Finance Minister. Thank you to Nicole Thomas, my producer. Daniel Thompson, Technical Operator. Thank you to all the listeners. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. I'm Emily Shields.